Hello everybody, I'm Nick and in this video I'm going to introduce you to the very first feature coming in C Sharp 13 and it's a very interesting feature because in my opinion it revitalizes or it revives an older C Sharp feature that we don't really use anymore or if we do use, we use it in very niche specific cases. This C Sharp feature being added in C Sharp 13 is extending that old feature and it effectively makes it usable, really usable in many, many more scenarios. So in this video, I'm going to show you what that feature is, how it works, some considerations, and explain why I really, really like that developers are actually updating this old feature. If you like that of content and you want to see more, make sure you subscribe for more training. Check out my courses on dometrain.com. Okay, so let me show you what I have here. I have a .NET console application, and the feature we're actually having extended over here is the params keyword. Now, Params is a keyword in C Sharp that many people don't know because you don't really see it used anymore, but it allows you to do the following. Let's say we have a method over here, call it example, and then we want to pass in that method an array of integers. So what you would do is you would have your array as a parameter here, and then you would be able to use it in the body of the method. Now, if I was to call this, what I would do is, well, traditionally, I would have my array, so I might use the old school way of creating an array, which is uh, something like this. So I would pass it down like this, or I can use the new shorthand way of using an array, which is one, two, three, and this will create an inline array based on the type that this method accepts, which is very, very cool and interesting. Now, what the params keyword would allow me to do is it will allow me to say, hey, params, integer array and this only works on arrays and then i would be able to say okay the parameters can now be the individual values i don't have to pass an array down and i can have n amount of numbers like this in line and by the way this doesn't have to be numbers it can be anything but in this case it is numbers and then that will then be converted into an array which will be dealt with as an array. Now, the way this works behind the scenes, let me just quickly uh, compile the code in release mode and show you the lowered low level C sharp. What's going to happen is you're going to have a new array allocation and then it's going to be passed down as you sort of expect. Now, historically, params had also a performance issue, which I can talk if you want in a future video. It deserves its own video. This is not something that concerns us in this case but the biggest problem of this keyword is that this only applies to arrays and we don't really use arrays that much i mean many people do but you have lists you have collections you now have spans you have so many different things that the params keyword could theoretically be applied but it just wasn't supported so in c sharp 13 we get a feature called params collections which is an extension of params arrays now params keyword can be used on any, not exactly any, but most collection types. Let's actually see that hands-on because the feature has a working set branch, meaning we can actually play around with it. So if I go on sharplab.io, I can choose the working set params collections feature branch over here, and this now will support the feature I want to demonstrate. Now, as you can see over here on the right, I have the lowered C sharp code. And you can probably spot some changes, but nothing drastic, nothing we should really take a look at at this point. There will be some really interesting stuff there as we're exploring the feature. So let's head straight into the feature, which is, okay, let's say I don't have an array and I want to use something that's more commonly used, like a list. Well, in C Sharp 13, you'd be able to say, I want to use this in a list of integers. And as you can see, the exact same way of passing down one, two, three as individual numbers is being converted through a parameters list, which is no longer an array, by the way, it is just um, an enumerable of some sort. But now here's the interesting thing about how the code is translated, because of course it works, but how does it work? Well, it works in a way that it's really, really efficient. Microsoft is using behind the scenes the collections Marshall class, which contains some really high performance. And if you don't know what you're doing, relatively unsafe stuff to do things like set the count of the list based on the numbers of the count that is incoming in a very efficient way, then deal with the list as a span, which gives you access to the underlying array of the list because lists are backed through an array and then set the parameters in that list in a very efficient way. So it is not sacrificing performance to allow us to do this. In fact, it is optimizing very, very well and it gives us the exact same experience without having 
to only use an array. This works with iList as well. Same thing as before. One of the biggest questions I had is, can this work with iEnumerable? And the answer is yes, but the default type here, as you can assume, is an array over here. Also classes or structs that implement iEnumerable will also work with this. And also this will work with read-only collections. So if you have an iRead-only collection of something, it will also work. iRead-only list, again, also work. iCollection will also work. It is really extended to be used anywhere that makes sense. But my personal favorite by far, and you might have guessed it, is spans. We can use this on spans. So I can say read only span over here and this just works. Not only that, it works in a very efficient way by using some internal runtime helpers to create the span in a super efficient way. So not only does this work, it is extremely performant and it's a great developer experience. You don't have to create a span, which for some people creating spans can be a bit tricky. And of course, this also works with just span. This will also work. However, I should point out that if this is memory, uh, this will not work. It needs to be a span in this case. And a bit weirdly, but it does actually make sense in hindsight, is that this will also work with the string. Why? Well, because a string is effectively also a collection of characters. So that's why this is legal C sharp now, while previously, as you can see on Rider, I couldn't write something like this is just not legal C sharp. Of course, you can convert this to the span version. So if you say read only span of characters and pass down a string, you're still going to have an automatic conversion. You don't have to have like a span of comma separated characters. The feature understands a string is an array of characters, so that's why it's being dealt with and accepted by this overload. And overall, it is just really, really cool. Now, I do want to talk about some considerations about this feature. Now, before I move on, I'd like to let you know that we just launched a brand new course on Dome Train called Getting Started with Microservice Architecture. And that course is authored by AWS Solution Architect, James Istam. It will teach you everything you need to know to get started with microservices the right way by someone who works for freaking AWS. Like, that's all they do. They know a thing or two to say the least. And I'm so happy to have him author this course on Dome Train because it is just fantastic and it's going to set the right foundation for all of you. So to celebrate the launch of that course, check the link in the description and use code MICRO20 to claim a 20% discount. This is only valid for the first 500 of you. And those 500 of you will also get a special 40% discount later when the deep dive is out. This is a really unique opportunity. So please don't miss it. Now back to the video. Okay, so what are some considerations or maybe concerns about adding a feature like this in the language because I should point out this is not 100% it is coming exactly as it is in fact originally it wasn't supposed to look like that originally the only thing supported was supposed to be the read only span and nothing else so this version of the proposal and the implementation is way way more open so I do want to know for this first consideration what do you think? And by the way, this is all still open for discussion. I'm going to put a link in the description with the proposal of the feature. Please, please, please go ahead and try the feature out and provide feedback. Microsoft will need all the feedback it needs. That's why I'm making these videos super early so we can make better decisions for the language together. In fact, if you do go on sharplab.io to play around with the feature, you can see the feature issue over here. And if I just click that, you're going to see that, yeah, it's proposed by Mads, parameters collection, all the information about it, a link to the proposal as well. I can click on this and you can see the full proposal and then the whole discussion about this feature is very, very fresh, as you can see, and not much action. But now we have access to it and I thought I'd make a video on it because we should be providing feedback. I personally really, really like this. However, there is a bit of a concern I have. And in fact, there is that same concern at the very, very bottom of the page, because originally what I showed you is that, yeah, we have this way of doing things with parameters and this looks nice, right? But if I remove the params keyword and I use the collection expression approach, this doesn't look that much different and it gives you effectively the same experience. Yes, you have two more characters on the invocation of the method, but you don't have the params keyword on the declaration, which you could argue is maybe better or worse. I don't know. Leave a comment down below and let me know. But to me, this is one of the most valid arguments because this approach also works with any other type. I can have a list of, let's say, an integer and this will still work. And it will also work with things, for example, like iEnumerable 
and so on. So it is not really that limited. It's actually very, very open. And even though the alternative is saying on that issue that this feature should only be allowed for read-only spans, well, you can still have a read-only span that uses the exact same syntax and still use collection expressions to convert it into a span. So do we need it? In my opinion, yes, and I'll tell you why. It's because the params keyword is a keyword occupying space in C-sharp, and it effectively is modernizing the keyword to the current version of C-sharp, because it exists, it's there, but having it only be able to be used for this very, very small niche of arrays that most people are not using doesn't really do it any good. It's just dead weight. By modernizing it, it gives another option to developers who maybe prefer this approach of passing down a parameters array or a parameters read-only span. So in my opinion, it should be added, but I really, really, really want to know from you. So leave a comment down below and please leave a comment on the issue. Try the feature out and let the compiler team and the c -sharp team know what you think. This feedback is really, really valuable. Well, that's all I had for you for this video. Thank you very much for watching and as always, keep coding.